All right, welcome to another episode of ZBrush on the iPad. So, this time I had a little something something I wanted to do here with regarding to uh, keying and cutting your 3D models to get them ready for 3D print. So this is assuming that you want to, you know, print your model into multiple pieces because maybe it's really complicated and this process will allow you to do that and then assemble it all back together without any issue and hopefully minimal seams and all that but it's definitely a good idea to do this it'll help minimize the support uh, that'll get on parts of your model that you might not want it, lots of different things. So essentially the key is the shape that plugs into the hole. And the way to do that is to use some kind of a, an object that will uh, cut your model and then add a positive piece to go into the negative piece. And if if this negative piece were the exact same size as this positive piece, then once it's printed, it wouldn't wouldn't fit. It'd be a little too tight. You'd have to do a lot of work to kind of clean that up and get rid of some material so that it will actually fit in there. So it's important that when you create your key that you uh, make sure that there's some little bit of space in between the negative and the positive. So here's a key that I quickly created right here in ZBrush on the iPad. And if I go to transparency mode, it's a little hard to see here. Maybe if I change to this, yeah. So I'm on this other piece, but you can see here's this lighter section is the positive piece that's gonna go into this negative section here. And you can see I've got a generous amount of spacing there. And what's gonna happen is this, you know, rectangular cube here will slice uh, the model and and also subtract this negative piece. And all that you'll be left with is the positive here, which you will then dynamesh to the piece that, uh, you know, that you wanna plug in after cutting it out. <laughs> so I'm struggling a little bit with the vocabulary here and what's the best way to describe this, but Rather than trying to just describe it, how about I show you? So once you've created your key, now this is low poly right now. So if I look at the, um, I've got to get on the right subtool here. You look at the polygons are pretty big. You'll you'll want to Dynamesh these shapes together. So what I'll do is go to Dynamesh. I'll crank this up four five hundred something like that. Hit Dynamesh and boom, really high uh, resolution. And now it's all one piece. And then just to kind of keep them separate, what I like to do is give them a color, each separate piece. So here's the negative piece, we'll make it kind of a red color. And then the positive piece, let's make that a green color. And then what you want to do is actually combine them, merge them together. So I use merge down. OK, so now they're all part of the same uh, subtool. And to be able to use this in other models, we need to export it. So this little guy up here is the export. And you want to export it 3D model. You want to do a ZTL, which is a ZBrush tool. And 
you know, I've got a name here because I did, I saved this before, but we'll just change it. We'll call it keys one. Okay. Hit export. It's going to ask you where you want to save it to. Save it to your files. I've got a folder called 3D files. I'll just save it in there. So now it's saved. And then if I go back out, sure, we'll save that to this guy. And again, this was a model provided by Svetmir Birokivi, or however you pronounce that. Um, then we can bring it in and use it to slice our tools. And so I've already got one in here, but let me show you the process. So to import, use this other button up here, import. We want to import a 3D model. Um, we're going to be importing a CTL. Select the file. There it is, keys number one. Hit OK, import. And it just brought it in as its own thing. Where'd my guy go, right? Well, we're going to have to go to this tool palette here and then go grab our guy. So this was the previous one. Okay, so now here's the guy we were working on. Um, well, wait a minute. No, nope. this was from an earlier one. So it might take a minute to find the exact right one you you want here. Mine has multiple things going on. That's just the arm. Nope. <laughs> the head, there it is. Okay, that's the one. So helps if you name your stuff. So it's not all the, the same, but okay, now that we're on the right model, this is good that I'm kind of running into these issues because this will help you if you run into those same issues, right? So let's bring in that new key. So we'll insert the key. It says keys one. And now it's brought it into this list of sub tools here. And we're not seeing it. And that's probably because it's inside of, yeah, it's tiny. It's in there inside of the, the model. So with my, uh, 3D gizmo, I'll scale that up and I'll position it to where I want it. So let's say, you know, I've broken off one of his arms, but I want to cut it, his torso in half, basically. So I'll position that. And you can see it's already a pretty good size. You know, rotate around there, you can see that this big pyramid key piece is completely contained within the model. The rectangular piece that's cutting the model extends all the way out. And if it didn't, um, you know, you could use your masking and move tools to extend it out further. Um, you know, and just to show you how that would look here, let's grab my mask. I'll just draw a shape. See, I've Got that little area out here. I'll invert it and then I can move it, scale it up. And because I've scaled this up so big, this is a pretty thick area here. It may be thicker than I want, you know, slice out too much of my model. So again, do the same type of thing, grab part of that. Let's make sure I, sometimes I like to get out of the 3D gizmo because it kind of changed the functionality. So I'm not seeing the mask. Come on. Try that again. Part of that mask or not? All righty. Well, let's do it from up here. There must just be tolerance issue. Um,
Yeah, so you can clearly see I'm masking part of it there. Try the whole thing one more time. All right, definitely got part of it isn't masked. And grab my 3D gizmo and position it around, get closer, and then just move those up. See, is it moving stuff I don't want it to? That's weird. Oh, see, another gotcha, folks. Something you gotta be careful of. See how all these guys are checked? That means it's affecting all of my different layers or subtools, so we don't want that. Just want to move this one. All right, feel better about that. Okay. And at the same time, we're affecting this positive piece of the key because they're still part of the same subtool, which I think is good. Okay, so now what we want to do is break that apart. So we're going to split it two parts. Hit OK. Um, one of them disappeared on me. This one. There, it's still there. Okay. Got to make sure. Okay, so what we want to do is do a Boolean where we cut out this red negative part of the key out of the body. So I want to drag it underneath. Come on. Just trying to drag it here. All right. There we go. Drag it underneath the body. I'm going to hide these other pieces. So the only two are visible are the, the body and the negative part of the key. Okay. You know, we can check our transparency again, make sure nothing moved. Looks good. Let's turn on live Boolean. We're not seeing it yet because we need to Tell this in Boolean process that it's a subtraction. And so now look at that. It sliced the body in half. It's giving it a red color because that's the color of that tool. And so it added it, which is why I've got this coloration up here as well, which is fine. That can be changed later. It's not really hurting anything. Um, and now, Need to go to Boolean here and make it real. So right now it's just a preview. So Boolean, make Boolean mesh. It's going to do its magic up here. Wait for it. Okay, we're done. And then I'm going to go ahead and hide these pieces and bring in this newest one. This is my new Boolean piece. Okay, see it sliced out there. Since so that's looking good. And what we want to do, like if we look at the polygroups, we can see, still see that the polygroups aren't quite unique. I mean, so I can't split these by polygroup, but what I can do is split them by just split to parts. And then it just figures out that, you know, this is one piece, that's another piece. So. There we go. Now we can see that big negative space here in the body to receive the lower half of the body when we go to assemble it. And then just to make things more visible, well, first let's get rid of some of these pieces I don't want. I don't want that guy anymore. You know, we'll keep the head, we'll keep the arm, and I said just to make things more visible, I like to 
move them around. And then that also helps. Oh, another gotcha. I got ahead of myself. That was a close one. <laughs> so go to solo. We can see that he doesn't have the positive key to go into the body. So thankfully I didn't get crazy and delete that yet. But where's our positive key? This one? Yeah, and I, I don't know why. No, because oh, because we're on solo. So now we hide that. Hide that, we hide that. Bring these two closer together. So now these two are right next to each other. The default is that they're a positive uh, Boolean process. So Boolean's on, we gotta make it real, make Boolean mesh. It's gonna do its thing once again. Okay, now let's hide those. And it's always gonna be your last subtool. Grab that, popped it in here. We can delete the previous lower body. And now if we make all these body parts visible, now we can grab this lower half of the body and move it out of the way. Just in case, you know, we did some dynameshing, it was all one model again, it's not gonna try to merge pieces together that we don't want to be merged. So that is it, my friends. Pretty straightforward. Hopefully that makes sense and that that will help you with your 3D printing needs. Let me know if, if you like this, if you want me to take it further, you want to see it actually printed and go through those steps. Happy to do it. Until next time. Happy ZBrushing.